Hey guys, we're getting started right now. It'll be just a few minutes before we're ready to go. Uh, I'm gonna send this out to everyone. Can I see my phone, please? Sorry, we're, uh, uh, because of the short crew tonight and because of the, the lockdown order, we're, we're running a couple minutes behind um, and trying to do this just a little bit differently. If you happen to be on the Facebook Live, uh, hi Melissa, uh, if you happen to be on the Facebook Live feed and you can't hear well or something like that, please, uh, please let me know through Messenger um, to let me know that you're watching. And if you're watching on YouTube Live, I'm about to send that uh, web address out on our church prayer chain so that everybody can get that. Um, but I will be in just a moment ready to start. Well, it is so good to see so many of you. Um, I see several people from all over the world. Uh, Dan Kim, great to see you popping in. Hi, Miss Carol, hope you and John are doing well. And uh, Miss Betty Gobby, wow, so good to see you here too. Um, hey Chuck, glad you're here. Um, tonight for our, our time together, we're gonna, be, uh, we're gonna be looking at a kind of a review of what we did on Sunday for our service, uh, which is the call of Levi. Um, and, uh, and so as we, as we get into that, um, we're going to start with, uh, with, with a song, uh, for those who don't know, this is my son Malachi and, uh, he is a much better uh, musician and instrumentalist than I am, although he would never say that. Um, all right, dude, I don't know where to go to find your song. There it is. All right. Um, but uh, we're just gonna sing a song. We don't have the words up for you, but if you know it, join in with us. Um, but uh, we're, we're gonna be talking about God's love for us and, and what he has done for us. And so um, while, while we are singing this song, if you have a prayer request, because we're gonna take, make tonight a, a time of prayer as well. If you have a prayer request, then I would ask you to either put that on the, the YouTube link uh, I mean on the Facebook link if you're on Facebook and if uh, if you're on YouTube uh, You can text that to me. My number is three five five three four seven five if you want to text to us that's three five five three four seven five and when we get to our prayer time we'd be we'd be honored to uh, to bring into that your prayer as well and so um, if you join with me in kind of an opening prayer and then uh, Malachi will take us into our our song here for just a moment Father, we're thankful to be able to gather, even in the, the oddity of this time. Father, wherever we're at in the world, we are aware of, of what is happening around us. Father, this illness, this virus that, that no one has immunity to, that, that everyone can be exposed to, and that everyone has, a, has the ability to be made very ill. Uh, Father, we just, we just ask that, that you would calm nerves, that you would ease fears, that you would remind us that, that, that we are a people of faith, not a people of fear. Uh, Father, we pray that you will be with our time tonight as we, as we open up the Word of God, as we open up the Bible and we look at what it is that you have for us in this time. Uh, God, we just ask that, that you will be ever present with us no matter where we are. And so we thank you for the opportunity to gather in this unique way. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Do you want me to hold this up so you can see it? Yeah, fine. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. All right, we're going to sing Reckless Love. Yeah. 
very much. Um, uh, it, is, uh, it is really good to be with you tonight and uh, to be with you in such a unique way, an opportunity. And I, I love seeing, I've got friends from here in Louisiana, friends from Indiana, friends that are in Hungary right now that are all, uh, all online. And uh, uh, it's great to be able to, to share with you. Hey, Malachi, on the table up there where I preach from normally are my notes from Sunday. Would you grab those, please? Um, I'm going to pull in a little bit closer to this. Um, uh, it, is, uh, it is a strange time, uh, a strange day, a strange happening as, as we watch the world today. Um, but it, it does remind us in this time that, that no matter what our background is, no matter where we're from, no matter what we've been through, uh, we all have the commonality that we are created by God. We all have the commonality that we are one of his children and that we, we were made for him to love. And he loves us just because he made us. And, uh, and, and because of that, there's nothing we can do to, to lose the love that he has offered us. And there's nothing that we can do to earn the grace that he gives us. And, uh, and so as we, uh, as we move into prayer, um, just kind of going to flip back through here. Uh, thanks. Hey, Malachi, a lot of people said you did an awesome job. So uh, let's see. I'm not seeing your prayer requests that are popping up on there. Um, I got a couple people told me they're having some connection issues. Uh, but some prayer requests that I've gotten through today, through the day today that we just want to make sure that we're praying for. And if, if you have something... Put it up on the on the YouTube live or the Facebook live, and uh, we can we can uh, all be praying for it there with what's on there. Um, the 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 text messages that I got today that where people were asking for prayer, uh, we want to continue to be praying for Linda Doolittle, who is uh, who is is fighting a, a multitude of illnesses and and things that are going on, and and she's still in the hospital down in Lafayette. Uh, so we want to continue to, to pray for her. Uh, Miss Becky uh, Nethery asked to pray for prayer for her Aunt Teresa, who happens to be uh, Susan Curry's mother-in-law. Um, uh, if you are watching on YouTube, would you text me and let me know if we're up? Because uh, something just happened to my feed on my end, and I may have to restart there. Uh, but we'll keep going for our Facebook Live people. Um, but uh, Miss Teresa Curry uh, fell and broke her hip, and, and we want to be praying for her um, as she's had a, a hip replacement there, and uh, uh, we want to we want to continue to pray for her as she's being cared for. Uh, I see a, a prayer request up here, praying for the ministry Life Without Limbs, uh, Brother Gary. It's great to see you on there, and continuing to remember Nick Voychik and the ministry that he's doing, and all those associated with that. Um, also, uh, you know we. We all, if we don't now, it will not be long before we are uh, affected personally by what's going on with the coronavirus. Um, uh, we just found out today that in Sterlington, the small town where I live, which is, is just a very small community, um, that we've already had a death there in our community. and. Uh, the, the man who passed away, his wife is, is homesick right now with that as well. And um, I see, Alicia, you, you added to it that you lost your uncle a few days ago. We definitely want to be praying for that. And just all of these that are affected by that. Uh, this, this, this family that lost there in Sterlington is, is less than a mile from my home. And it's, it's right around the corner from, uh, from Jamie Smith and, and Kate, who, uh, who are part of our congregation. And so we want to be praying for all of those that are affected, all of those that are infected, uh, for, for people like um, uh, uh, Shannon Berry, who is a part of our congregation, who is an emergency room doctor. We want to be lifting her up and all of her coworkers uh, as they continue to work uh, in, in one of the most hostile fields uh, right now. Um, we also want to lift up people like my wife, who uh, is working in a walk-in clinic and and these days is pretty much in a hazmat suit from the time she walks in to the time she, she leaves uh, and to come home. And, and so we just want to be praying for all of those people who are in the midst of that, all of those who are, are fighting um, for their lives, all of those families who are, um, who are sitting at home worried 
uh, because they're not able to go to the hospital with them. Uh, and so we want to be praying for all of those. And, and so, um, uh, let's see, uh, yeah, I got somebody saying that I can't get YouTube to work. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and reboot my YouTube stream uh, for my live uh, Facebook stream. We're going to continue to go on. Uh, let's see what we can do here in just a moment. Um, so I'll keep talking to you guys. Um, I, I'm wondering, I see people here, um, uh, if you're still there, Dan, Kim, in Hungary, can you, can you tell us how things are going there? Um, I was able to speak, uh, I, don't, I don't see Dan popping up, but he may be typing, but I, I was able to speak to some friends of mine in Indiana to just find out that things are still going, uh, going rough there and that they're, they're still growing and increasing in, in illness. Um, but we want to continue to be praying for, for all of those. Um, but let's, uh, let's go into prayer. Oh, uh, Dan Kim says, hey, buddy. Uh, and I got a message that YouTube is gone, so I'm working on YouTube right now. Sorry, guys. I know this is a little crazy, and I apologize for uh, for the connection uh, mishaps that are going on right now. Um, let us uh, go ahead and and be praying while people are are logging into our our YouTube stream. Um, and so, well, let's uh, let me send this out really quick. I'm so sorry, guys. It's riveting Facebook Live, I know. Um, all right, I, I don't know what has happened to YouTube. Uh, I will continue to work on that, but let's let's move on. Um, uh, Dan was only able to get back in and, and connect with me. He says that um, they're in Hungary. Uh, they've been on lockdown in their home for almost two weeks by choice. Uh, it's still legal to be out, but most folks are not. Um, and so we want to continue to be praying for them. Uh, like I said, I've spoken with some friends in, in Indiana to know that things are still on the rise there. Um, but let, uh, let us move into prayer, uh, and I'll continue to work on the, the YouTube while we talk. Father, we... We thank you for this time. Uh, Father, this moment of, of silence, this moment of stopping the madness that is this world right now and, and being able to spend a few minutes to focus on you, to focus on your love for us, to focus on, on your desire to, to continue to love us. Father, during this time, a lot of people are asking where you're at. Uh, but Father, I, I know that I have seen you in the waiting rooms and in the hospital rooms. I have seen you with our nurses and doctors and, and with all of our medical personnel. I have seen you uh, with families that are hurting while they are not allowed to go and visit their loved ones. Father, I've seen you standing with those who have lost loved ones. I have seen you comforting those in, in the most horrible of circumstances. And so we know that you're here. We know that you're walking with us. Father, we lift up this family in Sterlington. We lift up Alicia and her family and the loss of an uncle. Uh, Father, we lift up the ministries that are going into places still today to try to spread the love of Christ with those who need it so desperately. Father, we, we ask that you will continue to, to, speak, to, um, to speak to people even in the midst of this struggle and this strain. Father, we pray for the church that, that this may open our eyes to opportunities that we have been missing for a long time, that it will open our eyes to the ability to, to speak life uh, when we've clung so long to, to the, the strengths of what our smaller congregations are or the strengths of what it is to be able to be face-to-face -face with people, and now we're having to learn how to do ministry when we're not able to be. You've pushed us into the next generation. Father, we, we ask for your touch uh, for Miss Teresa. We ask 
for your guidance, for those who are making choices for loved ones. We ask for your wisdom as, as we as a church try to figure out next steps. God, we pray that we may continue to, to find you at each and every step. May we continue to see you at work and, and know who you are. Father, will you open our eyes and may we respond to your, your requests to follow you. Father, be with our time as we open up scripture. Be with us as we, as we dive into who you are and, and who we are because of you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, guys, um, uh, let's see what Dan also said. Um, he, he knows folks who have already tested positive for COVID there in Budapest. Um, and uh, they've uh, received word from uh, one of the, the UK embassy workers who's passed away there. And so we want to continue to be thinking of, of all of those families. Um, as, uh, as, as we meet, uh, one of the things I, I, I want to make sure that we do, uh, we can spend a lot of time staying focused on on what's going on uh, around the world. And, and in the process, we can lose sight of, of who God is and what he's called us for and who he's called us to be. And so uh, I just wanted to take a few minutes tonight and, and to kind of go back through uh, some stuff that we, we covered on Sunday, um, just, to, just to engage and to think about and to pray about uh, who God is calling us to be. And, and the story that we looked at on Sunday was actually the calling of Levi. Um, Levi is a tax collector. Um, in fact, he is a very low level tax collector. He works in a booth. And uh, Jesus, coming through town one day, stops and, and just, just looks at him. And, and, and the phrase that Jesus uses is, follow me. And it says that, that Levi... Um, basically folds up shop. He, he, he leaves his booth and, and he invites Jesus to his home. And while he's in his home, he invites his other tax collector friends uh, to come in and be a part of his gathering. And because of this, the, the Pharisees uh, just kind of lose it. Um, they, uh, <laughs> they understand who Jesus proclaims to be. And in the process, they realize uh, that he is, he is not living it out the way that religious people should. And, and so, so they have some pretty, uh, from some pretty gross criticisms of who Jesus is, uh, and they blast him about who he's gathering with. And, and he responds, you know, um, just like today, who needs the doctor the most? You know, the person, the person who is, is and knows that they're battling a, um, a, a mild case of sinus infection, um, as I am almost always in the midst of some type of sinus, sinus infection, um, or, or is it the person who is, is carrying all the signs and symptoms of the coronavirus and, and that person who really needs that? Um, and so we have to become people who, who understand the difference between what is needed and what is desired. And, and so uh, in that, this is kind of the, the battle that's going on with, uh, with Jesus in Levi's, in Levi's category right there. And so, um, so Jesus basically comes back and he says, who needs, who needs a doctor more than the sick? And so uh, then he, he goes back and he quotes a scripture out of Hosea, which is, I know the, the book that means so much to so many of us. And I know half of you that are online right now are looking and going, I didn't know there was a, a book of the Bible named Hosea. That's okay. It's a minor prophet in the Old Testament. And, uh, and we understand that, that there are times that, that we don't know everything that's in the scripture. And that's okay. Um, but in Hosea, there's, it's actually a lengthy passage there. But uh, what Jesus is quoting from the other half of that is, um, I desire, uh, sorry. Uh, I desire mercy and not sacrifice. It also follows it up with, for I have come to, uh, for I also desire those who acknowledge God rather than burnt offerings. And he's, he's saying this to the Pharisees who are ritual followers. 
And, and I think the, the point that he's really trying to make to, to the Pharisees is at what point in time do the rituals become more important than the people that God wants to reach out to? Because God wants to engage people. He, 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 Jesus came to die for people. Not so that we could continue to meet in our sanctuary. Not so that we could continue to be a part of, of this sect or this sect. Or, or, or not so that we could, we could come into our holy huddles and just kind of enjoy what, what's going on. Jesus came for people. And the Pharisees over time seems to have lost that. And I think, I think that's the challenge that he has for us is because, because in so many ways for you and I, if we call ourselves a Christian, how many ways would we be more like Jesus or would we be more like the Pharisees? And I, I think it's pretty safe to say that for so many of us, we are definitely a whole lot more like the Pharisees than we are like Jesus. Um, we tend to look around at people that are different than us, whether it's, it's because of their, their color of skin or whether it's because of their heritage, whether it's because of their, because of their socioeconomics or, or whatever tends to divide us. We tend to focus a whole lot more on that than anything else. And, and what Jesus is saying to us is the same thing he says to Levi, because you got to understand in that day and age, um, a, a, a tax collector was viewed probably about the same way that we would view a pedophile today. Someone that is, is lowest class, poorest decisions, the worst possible scenario, because this is a person who in their eyes had chosen to stand up for the Roman government and collect taxes and levy taxes against his own people. And in doing so, that means that he turned his back on his own people. And, and so this is who Levi is. And so there's not a single Pharisee in the room that would have loved Levi. They would have hated him just like anything else. And, and yet this is who Jesus comes and he talks to. And this is not the one and only time that Jesus engages with tax collectors and sinners as we read throughout scripture. He's with them almost nonstop. It's, it's a big, huge part of his ministry. And, and so when we read this scripture... Uh, one of the things that's really interesting is the, the, only, the only book of the Bible that records this calling is the book of Matthew. Now, why is that? Well, because when Levi was called, um, when Levi was, was brought into the flock of Jesus, he was given a new name. And that new name was the name Matthew. Uh, so... Why would Levi include this story? Because this is the story of himself. Matthew is, is recalling that he was a sinner lost and going to hell. He had turned his back on his people. He had turned his back on his loved ones. And, and Jesus still showed up and had faith in him. And, and so I want you to know that, that whether you fall in the camp of, you would find yourself more in the camp of Levi or more in the camp of the disciples uh, or, or the Pharisees, sorry, um, Jesus still came for you. We have choices in this time. Um, it's, it's really important these days, especially, that if we identify ourselves with Christ, that in that time, in that, in that engagement, we need to understand what it means to live like Jesus, what it is to live out the love of God. Um, we often put ourselves in, in some type of judge's seat. And if we're going to live out the love of, of God, when Jesus is coming, the, the judgment that he passed most often was on those who judged the people around them. And so I want to invite you um, to join me as we, as we pray for uh, the community, for the congregation, that we not just make it words that we speak between us and God, but, but actions that we live out, ways that we engage. Um, it is important that, that our faith be something that is, is actually done. We, we use the term believe quite a bit, and in the English language, the believe is a, believe is a passive verb. 
It is one that, that means just to, to hold an understanding, to acknowledge, to, to, to believe. And, and to believe doesn't mean that you have to do anything. You know, it's, it's just a form of, of saying, well, that's, that's how I understand life. Um, and our thoughts, our understandings are not action driven. But the reality is, is if you truly, truly believe something, it should alter the way that you live your life. I mean, I believe that broccoli is good for me. It's kind of a scientific proven fact. But I don't believe that I like it. And so there's not much that I can do with that fact. Um, but when you have faith in something like God, if, if you believe in a God who cared so much for you individually, if you believe in a God who care, cared so much for you that he created you to love you and he loves you just because he created you. If you have that kind of belief and if you believe that that God loved all of humanity so much that all of those who were far from him, he sent his son to earth to live a life, a sinless life, and to die a horrible death and then to defeat death and to overcome the sin of the world. That belief should actually change who you are. That belief should alter the way that you live your life. Because if you believe that God loves you that way, then you have to believe that he loves everyone else that way. And if you believe that he loves everyone else that way, then how does that alter the way you treat other people? You know, it's really easy right now. Um, I know uh, just that kind of the first, the first uh, domino that fell for all of the sports to be shut down and for us to have kind of a sports-free existence right now on TV, except for watching old March Madness stuff and watching old sports stuff, um, was in the NBA. And there was a, there was a player who had, who had mocked the coronavirus at first and, and um, touched all the microphones and the table and just kind of made a fun thing about it. Well, he was the very first guy in the NBA to be diagnosed with the coronavirus. Um, it would be really, really easy, and I've seen a lot of people go, well, he got what he deserved. That's kind of the karma thing, um, except for Christians don't believe in karma. Christians are people of grace, not what goes around comes around. And so it would be really easy to sit here as a Christian and to judge him or to judge the person who beat you in line to get the last roll of toilet paper or the person who got all of the the, the anti, antiseptic wipes or whatever, um, it'd be really easy to judge that, it, except for we don't know their backstory. We don't know what they're going through. We don't know what they have at home. We don't know if they happen to be caring for someone who is at home that is incredibly uh, at risk. You know, we don't know the stories. We don't know what's back there. And, and even the guy, it, you know, we go back to the NBA guy, um, even, even though he did something dumb, that doesn't mean that he deserves what he got. No one deserves this. If you've seen the stories of what this illness is like, no one deserves this. But we live in a broken world. We live in a fallen place. And so my challenge to you as we, as we read through this story uh, of Levi and his calling is when we live out our lives, Will we choose to live out the life of a Pharisee or will we choose to live out the life of a tax collector? And what I mean by that is, will we get lost in our brokenness and, and compare ourselves to other people and consider therefore ourselves superior? You know, we have seniority, we have superiority over other people because, because we don't live like them. Or will we recognize as did Levi and the other tax collectors that we have a broken existence. There are things in us that just don't measure up to Jesus' standard. And if we can do that, if we can begin to do that, then we can live a life that is transformative, not just to ourselves, but to others around us. And so that's my engagement. That's my prayer for you tonight. Um, may you be a person like Levi. A person who understands their brokenness and therefore doesn't sit in judgment of other people because they're broken, but one who loves other people in spite of their brokenness because you can identify with them. 
Maybe their brokenness is different than yours. Maybe their sin is different than yours. But that's okay. Mm -hmm. They're still God's creation. This is... You are still God's plan for redemption of this earth. And so, I'm praying for you. I love you guys. Um, we finally got back up on YouTube. There's not a whole lot of people that were able to find that link. I'm sorry about that if you're on YouTube. Uh, we had some technical difficulties here and abroad. Um, but thanks for joining me on YouTube. Thanks for joining me on Facebook Live. Uh, I want to say a prayer for you guys as you're going. Um, my prayer is this. God, would you please watch over all of these people? Would you care for them? Would you, would, you, would you be their guiding light? Father, would you grant them the wisdom for the places they can go and the places they shouldn't? Would you grant them protection when they must get out? Would you be with them as they reach out to their neighbors and loved ones? Father, would you keep them safe as they love on those around them? Father, and most importantly, as we've talked about tonight, may we see ourselves in light of who you are. Admitting our brokenness, acknowledging your greatness, and knowing that you will bring us closer to you. Father, anoint our lives, that everywhere we go, everywhere we see, everywhere we, we are, everything we do is done to bring honor and glory to you. We thank you. In Christ's name, amen. Hey guys, thanks so much for joining in. Uh, hi, Julie. Hey, Patty. Um, hey, Dr. Shively. Great to see you. Um, thanks so much for being here tonight. And uh, I hope that you got something. I hope that you were there. Alicia, it was good to see you and hear from you as well. Miss Carol, the same thing. I uh, love you guys. Have a great evening. Stay safe and check on your neighbors. Love you guys. <laughs>